I'm a social worker in palliative care at Queen's Hospital, Romford. I am very honoured to be the only social worker employed by the Trust, and I take that as a great privilege. Is there any other social workers in the room? <laughs> right, um, anybody heard of Trusted Assessor before? Okay, this is going to be fun. Right, okay, so let's start. So, trust that, that's the Trusted Assessor working in collaboration with nursing homes at Barking Haven, Redbridge and University. Uh, we came runner up in integration into continuity of care, and it's myself, my colleague Ursula, and Heather, um, our manager, who's sitting on the table over there from behind. Okay. So the background to the fast track. Um, basically, fast track funding. Anyone heard of fast track funding? Brilliant. Fast track funding is funding that's awarded to patients that have got a rapidly deteriorating or unpredictable illness and life limiting. And it's basically, it came into place by the CCGs so we could access funding quickly for our patients that were in life care. Um, so that's, that's a very brief synopsis of what Fast Track is. So once our patients had Fast Track funding approved and it's evident they wanted to go to a nursing home, the waiting times for the nursing homes to come in and set, assess our patients was very long. I mean, we were talking anything between five, 10, 14 days for nursing homes to come in. And when you're looking after patients that have got a very life-limiting illness, they don't want to sit in a hospital bed. You know, they want to be out, they want to be with their family, they want to have open energy. So we looked at ways of improving this process as we were concerned that basically, you know, our patients weren't reaching their preferred place of care. Bit, on average, they were waiting five to 10 days for nursing homes to complete the assessment. And it was a significant delay. And unfortunately, during that delay, some of our patients became too unwell and they weren't able to transfer and, and they died in hospital, which was not their preferred place of care. So, so we thought, how can we change this? So we had lots of discussions. We had discussions um, within our team. We had discussions on the ward. We had discussions with the nursing homes um, to find out what was their difficulties. Why were they having problems? What was causing them to wait 10 days to come into a nursing home and see a patient? So their main issues that they came back to us was <coughs> releasing appropriate staff to complete this initial assessment because like everybody else, they're very short staff, they've got limited um, availability. Accessing the relevant information, they often found that when they came to the ward, um, <coughs> they, they, they had trouble accessing the patient's notes, they had access in, access the doctors, getting the right information about the patient, so they would end up going away only to come back another day. Um, sometimes this caused very difficult relations with the ward um, once the patients had been discharged from the nursing home because basically the wards would say, well, they're, you know, they're with you now and they weren't offering to help and it just all became very, very difficult and sticky. So, what we did, so in January um, 2015, the Special Palliative Care Team, we took over all the facilitation of fast tracks because prior to that, it was the social services that were doing them. So, in 2017, the NHS Rapid Improvement Guide to Trust and Assessors come out and we spotted this and we thought, this is perfect. This is basically just what we're looking for. So, <coughs> we worked out how we're going to do this so in November, what we decided the best way to do it was to actually go to the nursing homes ourselves, to meet with the managers um, and to look at their paperwork. Was it really so different from ours? You know, because once you've done a fast track, you've got all that information on there. Why, A, why couldn't you really use the fast track? Or B, you know, what was so different about your paperwork that you had to come in? And we felt we need to start building up relationships. We need to start working out, you know, how we can start trusting each other. Because for ages, nursing homes and hospitals have always been them and us, you know. And we thought, well, we're not having this anymore. Because in the middle of that is a patient. And we need to get that patient out. So, we went to, myself and my colleague, Ursula and Heather, we must have went to 11, 12 nursing homes. It was that bad day as well, it was difficult, you know, but we had to go in there. Um, and, it, you know, once they met us and we met there, it broke a lot of barriers down because at the end of the day, we all realised we were there for that patient. So, in December um, 17, three local nursing homes agreed to be part of a pilot scheme. That's all, at the 11 to start with, was three. 
And we were thinking, oh gosh, because obviously, if the family didn't choose that nursing home, then we couldn't have done that paperwork and we'd have got nowhere. So, thankfully, that worked out okay. And we started properly in January 2018. We've got 11 nursing homes over four different boroughs to come and agree to be part of the trusted assessor, which was brilliant. So, as you can see, how we did it, visit the homes. We developed a trusted relationship with the homes and palliative care. And this was achieved by initially, the homes were a little bit reticent about whether we, we could do the assessments or not. They came to see a patient and we did a joint assessment with them. And once they realised that we're actually, yeah, do you know what, we can do these assessments, they were quite happy for us to do it. It's about understanding the nursing home and understanding the patients that they can accept. Some patients are very, very complex and we will always find the nursing home to come in because what we don't want is a failed admission. We do not want a patient going to a nursing home and it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because they didn't have enough information. That is not what we want. And touch wood, this has never happened. We've never had one readmission yet. So, standardising one generic assessment form. How many forms can you have for each different nursing home? It was unbelievable. Some had a 10-page document, some had a 3, some had a 7. All basically the same information. So what we agreed was for Havery, one generic document, for Redbridge, one generic document, for Barking and Dagenham, one generic document. And they were all basically the same, the same information. And then obviously some of the nursing homes had different specialisms. So some of the nursing homes specialised in dementia care, so that was the patients that we tended to go um, to those nursing homes with. So they needed a little bit more information about what was going on with their dementia, was there any medication, what was the plans, was there any appointments coming forward, all that sort of information. So also what we found really important was when we'd done trusted assessors for our patients, if there was a problem, then that nursing home could phone straight through to palliative care. So there was none of this waiting on the walls, trying to find the notes, trying to get hold of the doctors. You know, <coughs> if, for instance, one of the patients went home and they didn't have all ends of life medication, they would come through to us, we would go directly to the ward, it would be sorted within an hour. So it really built up a high level of trust. So prior to, to doing the trust of assessor, the average day of patients with this wait to be discharged was 12. I mean, 12 days, it, it's just mad, isn't it? End of life care for 12 days. 15% of patients were discharged they had chosen nursing home on the same day. So we'd go and do the trusted assessor in the morning, we would fax the paperwork, those were the days, email the paperwork. They would then come back to us and say yes or no, whether they were going to accept the patient. They always accepted the patient because if there was any doubt, we wouldn't have said that. Um, and 15% went the same day, which is amazing. We did the paperwork in the morning, by the afternoon they were set to their nursing. 49% of patients were discharged their chosen nursing home within 24 hours. And these patients were the ones that normally had to have oxygen, so we, it took 24 hours to order the oxygen to get into the nursing home. And 32% of patients were discharged in 48 to 72 hours. And there was normally a delay because it was at the weekend or the family didn't want them to go till they were there, or there, there was some reason, you know, so some reason for it. So on average, we have assessed 97 palliative care patients since then have been transferred, which is amazing. And it has saved over 86 bed hours, that's for the nursing home, and it's saved hundreds of bed hours, bed hours for our patients as well. So our next plan is to get more nursing homes, because we've not even really scratched the surface. We're going to do a little bit of a blitz and revisit our nursing homes as well, because some of them have fallen a bit by the wayside. Um, so we need to go and chippy them along. And then hopefully, you know, just move forward in able to access these services for our patients to improve their end of life care. Okay, short and sweet. Any questions?